will tell you so that you'll know that this man does not sit up here and mince his words or says things to you just for dramatic effect. I put a video up yesterday. That video was one I did two days ago. And I was going into some conversations about something. But and I don't remember today what the conversations were. But I do know that I decided not to put the video up because towards the end of the video, I say that I'm not really talking about anything. And so I stop the video. And I just leave it sitting on my computer and I don't delete it. Well, last night I was so tired. I did a nine minute video explaining about how a young man went to court and they postponed his court date. And I explained the reason why they postponed his court date. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I have a big buddy heater because I just turned it on and it just turned off. It has a fail safe, but the reason why it turned off is not a good reason. And so I have to come back over and turn it back on. And that is holding the pilot light until it lights and all of that wonderful stuff. This early in the morning, it's four o'clock in the morning. Nobody should have to be going through this, or I don't leave it on at night. And, well, because that's the safe thing to do. You know, it's those other people who ain't concerned about safety that you need to worry about. I was concerned. And so, you ain't got to worry about me. Now, it's back on, and it's a uh, flaming. The only thing about it is, even though I'm running. A very large tank I can't put it on high it can't handle it okay it literally can't handle it I'll talk to the manufacturer tomorrow uh, calling this company they do have customer service but calling them oh man that takes forever and ever ever and ever ever for really well I'm sorry miss Jackson <laughs> I'm for real okay ladies and gentlemen let me go ahead and explain to you guys, um, the reason why I said what I said and about, oh, so that's what's up. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button, and that button shouldn't have been hit. I hit that button as if I'm doing a demonstration. I was wondering why it wouldn't let me click uh, to publish the video. That didn't make any sense. I'm supposed to be able to do this. See, it left that little dot right there. I don't need that dot. And that's because I hit the marker. If if I wanted to demonstrate to you guys demonstration, uh, what I was doing. That's why I like this software. Z D Soft. Z is in zebra. D is in David Soft. S O F T. Z D Soft works for me. You can find the key gen and all that stuff if you if you're into that type of stuff for this program. Anywhere, anywhere. I gotta move it out of the way because it's stopping me from hitting this button right here. Publish. Let me go ahead and explain a couple of things before I start talking about those motions for appeal. Um, it's four o'clock in the morning there, well, 4.32. I'm supposed to be working on some other things, some other things. Um, and my primary mission this morning is to finish up that document that I talked about. The one where we're doing the constitutional challenges. See, I don't wanna make it too overwhelming for the court because you know, when they get overwhelmed, they can't handle it. You know, they just start making stupid decisions. I keep telling everybody, uh, when it comes to the courts, the Supreme Court under Roberts, they have told the party line. It, it Even when Roberts says, no, you can't do that, and they outvote him, they still are towing the party line. Everybody wants to have an opinion about abortion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a woman, but I'm sorry, abortion is not a woman's right to choose. That is a life. Sorry, she chose that option when she chose to have that engagement. Well, what if she was raped? Well, if she was raped, pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a consequence, but that is still a life. How, what you mean it's a life? Any other creature 
if we were to go and eradicate any other creature that wasn't fully developed, they would call that, pay attention, abuse. They would say that we have done something illegal, something wrong. What I am saying is that even if a person, and I'm not a person who advocates rape, I don't care what your mama say, I don't care what your daddy say, that's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. But even if that were the case, it is still a life. Okay, the government cannot sanction death. It is a violation of the Constitution. The government cannot sanction harming another individual. When they start defining who is an individual and who is not an individual, that's why we're in the situation we're in now, because the government tells you when you are a person and you are not a person. So once you let them decide when something is alive and when something is not alive, then you have just consented to them being able to tell you that you are a corporation or you're three-fifths of a man. Do you not understand this is the whole issue of slavery, where they got to decide who was a person and who was not a person? Do you not understand this has been the issue from the very beginning? Government does not have that authority, not in the United States of America. Look at the Constitution. The right to life is the right to life. Now, I've never gotten that phrase ever before when it comes to abortion. I never got that phrase before, the right to life. I, I'm thinking that they're talking about the right to that, that fetus, to be able to grow and live and all. No, they were talking about the constitutional right to life. You see, that organism that is going to become a human has the right to become. No one has the right to take that away from that organism. No, 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 I'm not saying give it up for adoption. That's not, we're not there. Everybody wants to jump to the end of the train thinking that they can get off at the next stop. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time you get off the end of the train and walk all the way up to the front of the train because there's only one door off, there's only one door. There ain't 18 doors. There's only one door. By the time you get all the way up to that front door, the train has already shut the door and is moving on to the next stop. So you can't go to the end of the train trying to get off the one-door train. The right to life is exactly that. The Constitution secures to every person the right to life. Then they say, well, what is defined as a person? We pledge our lives. Declaration of Independence. That's what they said. Our fortunes, our lives, and blah, blah, blah. They made a pledge. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a contract. The right to life is secure within the Constitution. You have these individuals that want to come up with all of these technicalities, these lawyers that come up with all these technical sayings. Please, don't let them do that to you. Don't you become as technical as those idiots. I know it's a controversial subject. I know I never got it as a kid, never understood it. Okay, because any one of you could have been aborted by your parent, and you wouldn't be here. So you wouldn't even have the option or choice of making that decision. Many of you, including I have a sister who has had at least two abortions. Okay, I would that have been a choice that I would have made? I was very disappointed in her when she did. Why? I had, I do will say this. I had a sister who literally wanted to give her children up for adoption because she couldn't handle them because two of them had mental disorder. I didn't live with them. I didn't know. I couldn't understand how could a mother want to give up their child. She wasn't trying to abandon the child. She was saying, this is too much for me to handle. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the children, because of their mental disability, ended up defending himself to the point where he took a person's life. Yes, he was defending himself, but he took a person's life. And he took the person's life in a fit of rage. Now, this is what I was told. I don't know. I've not spoken to the young man. No, it's not that we didn't speak. He's one of my favorite nephews. 
Okay, literally one of my favorite nephews, but this was this happened right after my mother's death. And I do believe that that is a contributing factor. Because I heard the way he was acting in court and everything, and he, he acted a fool. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> and the reason why I say that's okay, because that was his choice. He had that right. Nobody took into consideration that the young man was grieving because he lost his best friend. My mother and that young man were extremely close. In the last 10 years of my mother's life, she stayed with that sister and her children. So they love their grandmother. I know that for a fact. There, there's nobody who could say anything different because their grandmother loved them. And so I do believe the attorney never took it into consideration. The attorney, good attorney, but he was only working on a plea deal. Okay, it was an issue where somebody had threatened my nephew and the mother carrying his unborn child. See, now pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. We use phrases like unborn child. Getting back to the beginning of what I was just talking about, we use the phrase unborn child. Do you know that in the time of Israel, the people who were under Jehovah's law, we call it the Mosaic Law, but Moses received that by transmission from Jehovah. So the people who were under Jehovah's Law, those people had a duty and an obligation to obey that law. That law had a provision for damaging or causing harm to a woman who was carrying an unborn child. Not a fetus, an unborn child. Pay attention to the word. We use it all the time, an unborn child. We've been using that for centuries. Well, if you damage a woman and you cause harm to the unborn child, the law was life for life. Pay attention. Jehovah considers it a life. That's where I was coming from. I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm giving you the opinion from the person who is in a position to understand what is life and what is ignorance. All right. So we're going to move on to the appeal. The reason why these appeal documents are so important I want you to understand how universal they are. Because every court requires these documents to be filed. Both civilly and criminally. Yes, they're universal. But what I did for you is something the courts haven't done. Yes, the courts provide these documents on some of their websites. Uh, yeah, we're, we're at the right document. Okay. Sorry, this is... Uh, Dragon, naturally speaking, it was letting me know. I was just checking. The reason why I took a little moment and paused, because I was just checking to make sure that it was recording. All right, let's get back to this. Now, real quickly, before we talk about the appeal, I talked about an SUV being parked out of my home, outside my home. You guys don't understand. I've been here going on nine months. That's not happened before. Now, there have been a couple of times where other SUVs have parked in other areas, okay, and I'm aware of that and I paid attention to them because it is unusual. Okay, literally, it is unusual for an SUV to be out here just parked for no reason. Ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you, like in New Mexico, I told you guys how there were cars parked, angled at my property, looking at my property, and I could tell. Go back to 2012 and think about those videos where I told you. Okay, and notice what happened. I told you about how the gentleman came to my house the day after I filed the lawsuit against the post office, documenting that they were a private corporation, and all of a sudden they go shooting over my house. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, 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 let me tell you something for a second. Give me a second. I got to go to this one. There is a young man, and his name is Hilo. H-A-L-O. Hilo, how you doing? Okay. And y'all yeah, come up with these wonderful individuals with all these wonderful names, huh? We got Hilo, and we got Aloe, Aloe Black. I haven't played him in a while. No, we're not going to do music today. 
um, it's four o'clock in the morning and I'm just getting in. I, I hear a knock on the door and a, the voice sweet and low said, who is it? She opened up the door and let me in. And she said, where have you been? Are you hungry? Have, have you eaten yet? You know, I'm sorry if you don't know. Uh, it's a thin line between love and hate. If you don't know that song, I can't help y'all. Okay, Martin Lawrence helped y'all understand that song because I will tell you something about Martin. That song was on hit and that movie was on hit. Let's get back to this young man and then we're gonna get back to the appeal and how universal those documents are. See, for those people who think that I can't come back to the subject, it just takes a little bit of practice of knowing what the focus is. And that was what I lost sight of for several months because there was so much going on. Well, now, after yesterday, what the ignorant SUV, I realized, why does that bother me that somebody's watching me? I don't care. What are they going to do? So what? Let them, we've known that the FBI has been trying to investigate SAA because for some reason those ignorant mother think I run SAA. So fine, do your investigation. I, I've even told my people, let them investigate. Let them bring forth charges and then we will bring forth our counter charges. You see, after I work on this document, I'll be working on the criminal complaint against judges. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are thinking that that's not going to work, that they're not going to do this, we're not worried about it working. We're not worried about them doing this or doing that. We're worried about enough of you filing that document. We're worried about enough of you filing that document so that we can do one thing, people, so that we can do one thing, so that we can go as a group before the attorney general and say, hey, we put these petitions before you and you decided not to prosecute. We're doing a QTAM. Anybody ever do a QTAM against the judge? No, 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 no. A class action complaint against the entire judicial system. They see where I'm going. I saw where I was going when I put that together. Like I said, there's many reasons why they could be watching me trying to intimidate. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I do trust Jehovah that he won't allow anything stupid to happen. Just like the guys who fired at my place, they probably, well, no, because uh, the ones who did it on December 23rd, 2000, and pay attention, December 23rd, 2011, these idiots fired and shot over the roof of my house, and I go chasing them down. Okay, that was me. And then the police let him go. Never called him out of the car, knowing that we accused him of having a gun and shooting at me. They purposely fired over the top of the house. And that I can tell you it was on purpose. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give me a second while I type in H A. Come on. It ain't letting me type, so I have to wait. See, that's still processing. Okay. You know, I don't know how to spell the young man's name. Give me a second. Um, a Y N E. This young man is from, and I'm not sure the first name. But there he is right there, Harlow. Okay, I, 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 don't, don't knock me. I've only seen the name two days ago for the first time, so I couldn't remember it because he's not a household name to me, but he should be a household name to you guys. Okay? He came up with a product. I haven't heard any negatives about this product. I looked, I looked, I looked for videos of other people talking about the product. But what I did get when I looked up this Harlow Maine is the fact there were news interviews being done about him. 
showing his product, it took nine, well, a little less than seven years for his product to reach market. I'm surprised it did. Yes, it is available. Yes, you can find it. Yes, yes, yes. And so that's why I'm mentioning him. Now, if you don't know about Harlow Maine, M-A-Y-N-E, look it up. Look at the videos, then look at the item where you have other people talking about them using this item. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't pay for gas. They pay $45 for this cartridge after paying the initial $1,000 for the product. Look at this. Go 500 miles on the H2 Flex water gas. See it? I'm positively certain that somebody has created the connection where when you run out of water, you can switch to gas. The same as when you run out of uh, electric battery, you can switch to gas. Or you run out of gas, you can switch. This is the young man right here. This is him running his car with literally water and a canister of aluminum. Literally. He's been doing it for years. He created it. He didn't invent nothing new, ladies and gentlemen. They've been doing hydrogen to power vehicles since the, well, technically, Henningberg was empowered by hydrogen. The Henningberg was filled with hydrogen. And because of the lining of the Henningberg, that's what caused it to catch fire. It wasn't the hydrogen. The hydrogen was a byproduct. Hydrogen, yes. The gas is explosive, but it's not explosive to the next point. You're going to find yourself in a different county. That's why he has the container, because if the container explodes, it's a pop. It is not a blowing out the back of your vehicle. It never would have gotten approved for international safety. You see, this product is now sold internationally. This is the one thing the industry doesn't want out there. Hollow, he didn't do something. What I did, ladies, this is, I believe this is the new one. And you see, this was a year ago. This was seven years ago that he originally created this. And then now this is the product now being sold at the website. I would say, go here, it's Maine, his last name, Maine X, with the letter X. So his last name with the word X, dot com. Go to mainex.com. And what I say is do everything by credit card. Okay, if you don't trust it, do everything by credit card. That way you can get your money back. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it, it says 300 miles on $10. Okay, it took a while for this young man to even get investors. So what I'm suggesting is that you go and check it out for yourself. I didn't know about it until somebody told me, hey, I need you to watch this video. Once you watch this video, I promise you, you'll understand. And I promise you that'll be your focus. He was right. I watched that video and couldn't get it off my mind. I was telling everybody, including you all. All right, we're going to get back to the motions. I'm just going through the motions. You know, it's just so hard. You know, it, it's just it's just so emotional. We're going to go here. Now, I don't know because... My problem, and I want you to understand my problem. I was looking at this yesterday and I haven't shut my computer down. So I'm gonna have to, so that I can get the document to show up uh, because it took me several hours to edit all these documents to make them universal, to change the wording. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, this is the notice of designation of record on appeal. This, all of this is the information you need to be putting in the court, okay? The only thing I did was completely amended this document. The top part, if you wanna put your name and address there, hey, knock yourself out. Here it says, notice I'm not an attorney and I'm not required to know the rules of the court or ordered procedures. Ordered, somebody gave you an order, you don't get to order me. You're not my master, you're not my slave, you're not my boss. You don't get to order me. You get to issue an order, but it's not an order demanding I do anything. You don't have that authority. There, there, there are consequences for ignoring an order. But here's the point. The courts were never 
meant to rule issue a ruling, they were never meant to rule. In this country, the people are the rulers, not the courts. So long as the courts follow the law, their orders have weight. When they don't follow the law, they have no weight. That's what I'm saying. I am, however, apparently required to know the law, as ignorance of the law is inexcusable. It appears that rules, procedures have not been de designated as law. Rules and procedures have not been designated as law. I'm not required to know the rules and procedures. I'm only required to know the law in the United States of America. So please pardon my ignorance of procedures and rules. I mean, no disrespect as a result thereof. All of these things have been changed. It says, I elect to use the following method to provide the Court of Appeals with a record of the documents on appeal. And then it says, I have paid the court clerk for this transcript in advance, as I understand that the legislature has allocated tax revenue to be set aside for such budgetary needs of the court, that the court has received its projected annual budget, which I have contributed to in advance of these proceedings. And there is no evidence to the contrary. That's right, I paid taxes. And if you go and you look at the breakdown of the taxes, you'll see that my taxes directly contributed to the court's budget, which covers the filing fee and the salaries of the employees. And so we took, and here it is, I request that the clerk's transcript be provided to me at no cost because I cannot afford to pay this cost a second time. I'm insolvent due to the March 9, 1933 Act and its related presidential proclamation, banking holiday declaration. I'm insolvent. I ain't got no money. There ain't no money in, the, in, in America no more. No, y'all got it. Y'all got to do better than that, homie. That's what you're saying. Okay. So with that being said, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I am doing something very dangerous. I'm moving the heater while it's on. Well, if you know anything about these heaters, it has an open flame. Flame on! The flame is contained. It's just, I'm wearing clothing. I'm wearing polyester because I can't afford that stuff you guys got. Oh, man, that stuff that you get, that ain't off the rack. That's tailor-made. And Taylor ain't never made nothing for me. I mean, ain't never made no Swift either. We can get back to this, okay? An order granting a waiver of court fees and the costs under the Bill of Rights Double Jeopardy Clause. Double Jeopardy because I've already paid. I pay taxes. My taxes are allocated towards the budget of the court. If my taxes are uh, allocated towards the budget of the court, then enough said. It's already been paid. Now, you need to rebut my presumption. See, you rebut a presumption with a presumption. They can't kill that. They can't answer this, and they will not. One court tried to make it seem like, and he says because he pays taxes, he doesn't have to pay filing fees. Okay. Fine. Let me tell you what my genius was. For the past two weeks, I've been stressing on getting this done for two people. I have to do two appeals for two people. Hold on, I volunteered to do this for these people. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something. I was doing all the work. They weren't doing anything and they weren't paying me for this. So I said, oh no, y'all gonna fill out the paperwork now. Forget that. The same as you would have to do on your own, y'all gonna fill out the paperwork. You got any questions? I'll let you ask, but if you ask me too many questions and questions you should know the answer to, I'm gonna send you to YouTube. I'm gonna send you to Google. I'm gonna send you to do the research yourself. You're not gonna be ans asking me no question you can find out for yourself. Now get it done, because you ain't got enough time. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was the genius. That took a whole lot of pressure off of me and put it back where it belonged, on the people, whom the situation belongs to in the first place. Yes, I know people stress, and yes, I know they don't understand, 
but the first way they're going to gain understanding is by doing the forms. So this form is four pages long. You will find that everything, page one of four, all of the numbers, everything adds up. Go to this page, the same thing. All of the editing has been done. This is why I was so tired at the end of the night, because I had to make sure this got done. Ooh-wee! And some of it is going to take you guys using a PDF exchange or other software to fill in this area. Okay, are you going to hand fill it in? Knock yourselves out, people. It's not my job to do everything for you. We are providing this. At no charge. Some people will say, well, they could do this and they could say this. Then fine, amend it and make it say what you want it to say. Okay, that's the whole thing about these amended forms. All right, this is a jurisdictional checklist. You explain why the court has jurisdiction. It's a one-page document. Okay, and you're providing this. Not all courts, yeah, well, all courts do provide you to state what the jurisdiction is. Okay, we're not, we're not doing this diversity of citizenship. And when you do this document, you can either handwrite the date or you can put the date in. Okay, let's do this date right here. Okay, you can handwrite the date or you can put the date in. It really is just that simple. And that's the jurisdictional statement. Now look, we'll give you one of the points that it makes. The claim of appeal is from an order which is designated by statute, court rule, or case ruling as an order appealable as a right to the Court of Appeals. The authority under which you have an appeal by right is the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, which gives every citizen a right to petition government for appealing a wrong proceed, for which there can be no rulemaking or law prohibiting. Congress shall make no law. The word appeal in its legal context simply means to correct the wrong. So an appeal is a matter of constitutional right and not a privilege. At least this appears to be the will of the people in enacting the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, what the courts have said is an appeal is a statutory right. Yeah, they just came out with that stupidity a couple of decades ago, and nobody's ever challenged it. Ladies and gentlemen, the right to petition for redress is the right to appeal. It was already because the people did not want government being the final say-so. You go to one agency and whatever they say go, the people didn't want that. So the people said, oh, no, y'all ain't doing that to us. The people said, y'all ain't doing that to us. Y'all must be on crack. And apparently they were. All right, so that's this document. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a, an appearance document that normally should be filed, but I ain't got time for that. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Please accept my apologies as I ask the court to forgive me, for I am neither a belligerent or someone who has a lack of respect for a judicial system. And I beg the court's forgiveness of my financial circumstances as it is unavoidable due to the current national and international crisis. Doesn't matter, the world is going through a financial crisis and it's going through a pandemic and a moral crisis. There are so many crises going nationally. Petition for redress in reference to the financial status supported by affidavit in the Court of Appeals. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to do this nice little petition, and you're going to say, hey, I, I can't afford it. And then you're going to add some little comments. Let me tell you what the two comments are. Income has always been calculated after necessities, education, and living expenses. When taking the aforementioned into account, I fall below the poverty line nationally and am presumed statutorily exempt from the application of fees respecting the filing and the accessing of government. It also would seem unreasonable that in order for one to obtain redress from the court, they would have to sell their personal belongings just to gain access. 
perhaps the court could explain the logic behind such requirement because they literally the original document asked what type of cars you own boats trees planes automobiles you know and and that that ain't why, why i gotta give you all that why i gotta tell you what i own because they say well you could sell that and pay the fees excuse me where is that a requirement in law just because I have a Lamborghini parked in the driveway doesn't mean I own that. I'm making payments on that. There's a lien on that. You know, they just foreclosed on my house. I have a $450,000 billion dollar judgment against me. So that's a negative, not a positive. I owe that. I can't afford to pay no fees. I'm already being required. They were first in line. I'm required to pay them first. I'm sorry. Pay attention, y'all. I believe that there is a presumption that if allowed to remain unrebutted will cause my person to be subject to double jeopardy as a result of double taxation. I contribute to the national economy and the United States budgetary scheme through taxation. In other words, I help to support the function of government by my being an active participant in the revenue scheme associated with the budgetary allocations. The court receives an annual budget for which it petitions the legislature. That budget is associated with my contribution to the revenue scheme. I believe that the application of the fees in this instance would amount to double jeopardy, and I bring forth my constitutional claim that such a practice would violate the Constitution's Bill of Rights double jeopardy clause, and I raise the constitutional question as well as constitutional challenge to such practice respecting my interests as it has a direct impact on public interests and perception of our judicial system. What you've done is you've just raised a constitutional challenge and a statutory challenge regarding somebody telling you you got to pay a fee to access the court. Remember, you didn't always have to pay a fee to access the court. They did that because they needed to gain revenue, and that was their revenue scheme. This document. Petition for change in time for following transcripts, definitely fill this out. You're going to petition because the court usually grants it automatically. All right, uh, let's see. Looking for, yeah, we'll do this paragraph. The time for furnishing a transcript should be changed because a great deal of phrases and or wording are unfamiliar to me including the process of petitioning the court. This is not a regular routine for my person, and it is rather overwhelming. Also, with the current pandemic and restrictions on travel and the like, it is taking a little longer to accomplish things. It is my hope that the court understands and will grant the time to complete this process, as I am without the aid of learned counsel. And thank you. And here's a certificate of mailing, okay? And I sent this to the opposing parties at that last known address. And that's it. It's a one page of document. That's it, people. And then this document right here. Tick tock, tick tock. This is a certificate of interested parties. Let's uh make this a little bit bigger. Oh, I gotta get this out of the way because it's it's interfering with my biggerness. Get on out of here. Right there. Oh, too much right there. Too little, too late to ever try again. All right. Certificate of interested person. You notice the top portion is just the basic simple thing, copy and paste. Provides for in the following information. For a non-governmental corporate party, the name of its parent corporation and publicly held corporation that owns 10% or more of its stock. How do I know? How do I know whether they own 10% or more of its stock? This is what they had on their original form. Please separate the names with commas, is what it says. Please note that because the clerk style manual requires that names of parties be in all capital letters and or block letters, it is believed that this practice changes the capacity of the parties and thus violates the party's rights to due process of law to access the court to redress to petition. It is believed that this is a tactic that to intimidate parties and deny them their right to a fair and impartial 
administration of justice. Then you tell them, brother, this practice, although allowed by the courts, is not a requirement for a party to obtain justice. And I therefore and thereby object to such a practice and indicate that the opposing parties are being sued in their official and unofficial capacities, in their personal, private, as well as commercial capacities. This appeal was taken with the understanding, with that understanding, and I bring forth my challenge to such practice within the body of this appeal, uh, excuse me, within the body of this appeal would incorporate all the things on appeal within the framework of the appeal. I got to correct that, but I don't think it's necessary. It doesn't take away from the context. I will also bring to the court's intent, uh, bring to the court's intent to be held that uh, attention to it being held that corporations are under the oversight of the United States government. Let's go ahead and correct these now because that's two spell checks that I didn't catch the first time. Like I said, I was tired, y'all, tired. And when I, when I say I was tired, I mean I was tired. I was dead beat last night. I went to sleep at about 8 o'clock, and I woke up this morning at 4. Y'all know that's eight hours, right? Okay? that That's me getting eight hours. But that's how tired I was, okay? I'm so tired of being alone. Come on, ATT, AT and T. Oh, not a tip triple T. Ooh, no. And action. Oh, I put it twice, so I apologize. That has been held that corporations are under the oversight of the United States government and or their agencies in either uh, in all sorry Get rid of you. Okay. Where you at? You went too far. Yeah, this is this is one that I didn't get to go back over. Hey, I was doing too much. Come on now. I'm hitting the wrong button. This is the one I need to hit. Oh, no, no, no. I did that right. In there. No, it's end. I'm sorry. I did it wrong. I don't know why I was thinking in their official capacity. It's. Let's get back here. And where you at? Hold on now. Let's go here. Oh, it ain't going to let me. Okay. So I got to do it again. and their subdivisions are construed as one and the same as the United States government. An example of such a corporation is the Federal Reserve, a private entity utilizing both the term federal and United States in its title. Uh, let's get rid of this and put a comma. Yeah, we'll, we'll do comma. I, I had a... I had an issue with that when I first did it, and I was supposed to go back and correct it. An act prohibited by private corporations, see DC Code 223401, that was the thing you saw on the web browser when I first pulled up that web browser. Ladies and gentlemen, DC Code 3401 doesn't allow anybody to use District DC or District of Columbia in their title. Well, the United States has the very same law about federal. That's why you can't call yourself a federal anything because we're going to call ourselves the federal arbitration um, uh, we're going to call ourselves uh, federal arbitration something and realize that the secretary of state 
has a policy that they don't allow you to use the term federal in your junk. Okay, just that simple. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the last document. This is not all the documents. This is just the last document I pulled back up. Okay, and so these documents are documents that are required. This is only a two-page document, ladies and gentlemen, and you notice the second page is nothing. Look, second page is nothing. The first page, all you're doing is filling out a little bit. That's it. This is this is what's required to file an appeal, people. That's it. You're, you're not required to break your neck. You're, you're not required to go and salvage a ship and all of its cargo and trade it in. You're just required to file these documents. When you do your appeal, when you file your notice of appeal, technically, these documents should be filed in the record. Look, a notice of appeal is just that. Where is it? There's a claim of appeal. Where you at? Jurisdiction. Oh, the claim of appeal. That's the document that isn't here. Hold on. Let me see if I can find that claim of appeal. There it is. Hey, how you doing, homie? Claim of appeal, y'all. A claim of appeal, should all it has to say is notice of appeal. That's all it has to say is notice of appeal. So let's do this. I thought I took that probate matter out. I did. This is not the this is not the correct one. Okay, there there are two of them. Okay. Or did I take it out of this one? No, I used this one as a template, so I didn't take it out of this one. Ah, uh, shucks. Let's go ahead and take it out. No, not you. We do this one first. Just a little bit more. We get rid of you. Say bye bye. And we get rid of you. Okay. Oh, we got to get rid of this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and there's these extra spaces. Okay, y'all saw what I just did. And we can get rid of this line. We can get rid of you. Because it's an extra line. No, it ain't. And we can get rid of this line. And we can get rid of this last line. Man, I told a line. I walked the line. I walked the line. And there you go. And then Oz hit that save button. And then I'm going to upload it. I'll upload everything, everything, everything right after I do this video so you guys will have this current document. I thought I took the word probate and all that out of that, but I didn't. Okay, so this is my going over the documents. And I want you all to pay attention. Once you file these documents, the only thing you have to do after that is that they'll send you some paperwork saying you need to do this and you need to do that. Okay, so you take care of that junk. But the only thing you need to do is file your appeal brief. And that's it. The only thing you need to do is file your appeal brief after that. And so we're going to have a sample appeal brief that will be universal. The only thing you have to do is add in your information. All the other information will be based on facts and conclusions of law. The only thing you have to do is add the other information, and there'll be a section for you to add that in. Give me a second, because this stuff is not a cakewalk. Again, I had to go through this document to make sure that it's applicable. Even changing this stuff up here, district court, federal district, or state district court, doesn't matter. County judge, which would be the same as a district court in the state that have district courts on the state level. Or you can just click county judge or superior court judge is a county judge. Municipal judge, this is city stupid judge. City, you know, little city judges. And, or court magistrate, whether it's a city judge or not. Court magistrate. Let's see if I can bring you. 
Yeah, that, that'll work. Okay, when I did this, it took all of that into consideration that it would apply federal, civil, state, blah, blah, blah. So this was the equivalent of doing 21 documents. Federal, civil, state. Oh, I'm sorry, 28 documents. And criminal. Seven times four. A little bit more, a little bit more. Now, what I'd like to say is there are a lot of people out there who have good intentions and they create documents for people similar to what you've just seen me do, but they don't cover everything. Okay? They don't cover everything. Ladies and gentlemen, the case involves, I could have put so many other different things here, but the last one summarized it, a ruling that a provision of the Constitution and or statute and or rule and a regulation included, oh, I got to get rid of this Michigan thing. You see, this came, this one came from Michigan. And or other action of the legislator or executive branch of the state government is invalid. Let me get this right here. Get out of the way. Now I got to bring this up. Okay. Now, you see what the problem is? The problem is this right here. Watch this. TikTok. That's the problem. Okay, the problem is now corrected. And I got to do one more thing. Watch this. Get over here. See you? You out of place. You out of order. This whole world is out of order. I'm going to have to, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I got to bring you right back over here because this is a checkbox and I don't want to take away from the check, the checkpoint. Oh, mama, he's got a checkpoint. He got to go check in with somebody. And let's see if we can do that. There we go. That takes care of that. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Okay, now everything's back in place. And this is what I do now. Oh, let me make sure y'all understand. I had to do this with every document over and over and over again. Now, what I did is so you don't have to do it. If you had to do the same thing, it would take you hours to do because you would have to know how the software works. Okay, so now all the documents have been updated and I will update them and load them up and there you go. So now we've explained the appeal documents and how universal they are and how these are doc documents apply to state, federal, criminal, civil matters. No matter what level of court you're on, it doesn't matter if you're doing a simple appeal. Um, you know what? Let's do that. While I have you guys, let's see. What document can I do? Not that one. I need something that's simple. That has too much junk in it. Give me a second to see. The jurisdictional document might work because it's a one-page document. It also has those boxes. No, the jurisdictional document is not the one I need. Should I use the certificate of interested parties? Yeah, we can use the Certificate of Interested Parties. Do you know why? Watch this. I'll show it to you. All right. And now we're going to have 
file and we're gonna have save as got one more document to add y'all and I'm gonna pause y'all while I do this okay ladies and gentlemen technically a notice of appeal only has to say notice of appeal in the body. You, you don't have to say anything else other than notice of appeal. But however, we gotta get rid of this because this is a notice of appeal and it is amended from the notice of insurgent party. Ladies and gentlemen, what I will tell you is a lot of courts are not going to like this because they don't want you using any other term than the term they're used to because this form also satisfies standards. Uh, so I was going to say legal, but legal means statutory. And I don't like the statutory term because statutory it, it's a restrictive term. The people are going to say, oh, we're going to take those words and we're going to construe those as you hate statutes. You better believe I hate statutes because statutes are not law. Okay. There you go. No, we just hit save. Now, as I told you, all it has to do is say in the body, notice of appeal. You don't have to write any other words. However, I like to let them know, hey, mother, this is how I'm coming at you. How you living? What? How you living? What? How you living? In living color. That's how I'm coming. Now, let me read what it says. As a matter of my right that are, let's put what an S, because doesn't, that are secured, not granted. by the Constitution, I present this my notice and petition of redress. Now you explain to them how you understand the term phrase or word. The word term phrase redress means to correct the wrong. I do feel that the court and the opposing party have violated my rights with an S and by petitioning the court to correct the wrong perceived by myself and the court's refusal to do so interferes with the fair and even-handed administration of justice. The court have a delegation of authority. The only thing the court is there to do is to redress wrongs done to the people. That's the only function of the court, in my opinion, and thus violates the party's rights to due process of law, to access the court, to redress, to petition. It is believed that this is a tactic to intimidate parties and deny them the right to a fair and impartial the right to the fair and impartial administration of justice. Some courts have raised the issue that the right to appeal is simply statutory and not secured by the Constitution. This is a presumption. is unconstitutional in its own right, and that concept is foreign to the Constitution. As noted, the right to petition the court is absolute. An appeal is a petition to the court, is it not? However, 
a petition for redress is twice secured by the Constitution. How so? As it is directly related to the court's core function, that of correcting the wrong, not through ben, uh, vigilantism. See, you taking the law into your own hands. No, you don't correct the wrong by taking the law into your own hands. The taking of the law into one own hand but utilizing the judicial system, the government to obtain reparations and the making one whole again, or as close to that as possible. If one can only obtain redress via an appeal through a statute, and that statute makes such a right a privilege in certain situations, the next statute, oh, it's not the next, it's, It's then that statute is unconstitutional. That procedure is unconstitutional. That rule is unconstitutional. That opinion is unconstitutional. That presumption is unconstitutional. I have the right to challenge it as such. And I bring forth such a challenge and uh, present. Uh, it's supposed to be at present, not and present. Voice recognition. This shall serve and constitute my notice of challenge and of petition for redress via appeal okay and that's it and in your appeal you just mentioned these very same things that you're challenging and notice i could have brought all of this up and i think i am hold on we 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 we, we think therefore we isn't so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of i should have gotten rid of this on the original document and i think that i will so y'all just gonna have to hold on one more second a little bit mo a little bit mo Ladies and gentlemen, what you've been seeing is my editing and getting rid of some things. I'm going to pause you one more second because I didn't know it had started recording again. One second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just realized that there is a young lady who also has to do an appeal in her case. And I was explaining to her that she just had to do a notice of appeal. Notice of appeal is simple. Just It needs just to say notice of appeal and in the body, notice of appeal and then date, signature, and all of that. I gotta get rid of this one, so I apologize. Give me one second. This one don't belong here. One of these things is not the same thing. So that one didn't belong there, so he gotta go. Okay, this is the document now. So when you get the document, this is the format, this is the PDF, it's all done, ready for y'all to do whatever y'alls do, okay? You ain't got to put no phone number. You ain't never got to give the clerk. The clerk ain't supposed to be calling you. Okay? There ain't nothing in a, ain't nothing in law saying they can call you. Need to call you and know because ain't no way of documenting that. So if you've downloaded these forms already, you're going to have to download them again because it adds this information. Ladies and gentlemen, just so that you know, uh, wait, I have one more thing I have to correct. I, I have to correct. Give me a second. See, what I have to do is this right here. I got to copy. And 
Give me one second. I'll show you why I have to do that. One second. Okay, what I had to do is I had to correct this other page by editing and making it one page as well. It was two pages, and the other page only had the name and address junk. And so by doing it this way, technically, you don't need to put your address. Okay, so I'm going to save this. But if you, we already did the change of address form, and you guys can utilize that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this altogether because you don't need your name and address. You just need that uh, signature and date thing. That's it. It ain't it ain't going as fast as I want it to. So y'all just got to give it a second, okay, to catch up. Okay, that's what I was trying to do. Then we got one more thing. This right here, got to get rid of that. These boxes ain't supposed to be there. Cut. Cut! Okay, action. All right, now with that being the case, that's it. That's, that's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I... Hmm. These boxes are not lined up correctly. But y'all can, yeah, let me, let me do something right here. Let me do something. Let me take you, bring you on down. Okay, let me take you, bring you on over. Now I got to go back through the documents, ladies and gentlemen, and make sure that these things are lining up correctly. Okay, because they ain't lining up correctly, and I got to make sure they line up correctly. So that's one document. Let's go here. Come on, straighten up now, and let's click here, and let's see how things line up. See how these things aren't lining up? See how this is way over here, and this is Abe. This is Biba. This is Seba. This is Phoba. Come on, foe. Get on up here. So y'all have to give me a second because I have to go through and do this to make sure everything lines up. This is the work I had to do. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I had to go through each one of the templates to make sure that each line lined up and each checkbox lined up. That means I had to re-edit all of them because some of them didn't have boxes and some of them had boxes that wasn't aligned up. So if you would have clicked in that area, nothing would have been there. They are all done. They are just not all saved. And so by the bell, we have to save all of them because Jesus is coming. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I said it. Um, again, you see how everything is lined up? That's what I was doing. And it took quite a bit because remember, I got up at 4 o'clock. It's 625. Do, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? This is the kind of dedication you get for free. Nobody's paying me to do this. But there are quite a many of you, quite a few of you who need to do appeals, who don't know what you're doing, don't know the procedures, don't know the process. And being told, go do your research, that's not good enough for some of you because some of you don't know where to begin to do the research. So to keep you from looking stupid, because there's no better word for it, for lack of a better phrase, to keep you from looking stupid, what I have done is I have taken care of your stress. You've taken care of my stress? Well, how come you haven't taken care of my phone bill and my cable bill and my electric bill? All these bills, you should be taking care of that. And that's what people don't get. I am more of the legal person, the court person. That's where I have my experience. Doing all of this other stuff, I just tell you about that junk because of the research that I've done in the past. But other than that, mm -mm, what you get is what you get. Ain't it what you see is what you get? That too. Don't you see it? Then you ain't never going to get it. In vogue. Never going to get it. Never gonna, you see what I mean? Never going to get it. All right. 
ladies and gentlemen, the documents are done. They will be up on the website. Because while I'm uploading the video to the website, I am also uploading the documents to the website. So y'all just needs to pay some attention. And we're going to put the link in this video as well. So all you do is click on the link underneath the video and you'll have access. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, thank you for letting me take these two and a half hours to do this for you. Y'all take care. I just got to go. All right. Adios.